I'm going to talk to you about my Lux home directory encryption. And you might be wondering why encrypt your home directory or why encrypt anything? This is protecting you in the case of theft and protecting you from someone being able to see your files uh, and they can't access it unless they have the password. So you may be wondering why just the home directory? Uh, I really, I thought about it and I really do not store sensitive information in my system directories. The one exception I noticed of that is using uh, Network Manager. Uh, it stores by default, it stores the passwords outside of your home directory. However, you can uh, fix this in the settings and that's right here. A little bit of a blurry image, but you can see here, you go into this Wi-Fi security tab and then you select store the password for only for this user and then that'll store it in your home directory. Let's close that out. I also, I could do full system encryption and I would lose a little bit of performance with all the system directories. And so once again, I have nothing to hide there. Um, and But the other thing, I don't want to put in my password when I initially start the boot process and then put it again when I log in. I want to do one password. I just want to put in my password one time to save time. And I used to use EcryptFS. Uh, it's no longer supported. And the issue with it is it maxes out, out at around 500 megabytes a second. Now that's fine if you have a spinning disk or a SATA SSD. But it, and, and so that, that would, wouldn't be a big deal. It doesn't make much of a difference. However, it does make a difference on an NVMe. I tried out SecureFS that encryption option and also go crypt FS. Those are other options. <clears throat> and these were actually slower than ecrypt FS uh, by one or 200 megabytes a second. Uh, the other option is FS crypt. That's a Google, something developed by Google. And I never actually tested that, but I installed it and, I, and it looked like it took a little bit of work. So I just left it alone. Uh, there's a Pharonix article that compares uh, EcryptFS and maybe one other and Lux. Uh, so th these are the speeds. I have a uh, Samsung NVMe drive here on my desktop and on my laptop. And the Lux volume speed it is around 1.2 gigabytes per second. And outside of that is about 1.5 gigabytes per second. So it's not a huge perform performance penalty. Really not bad. Uh, so the steps I'm about to go through were from here. Well, I've got it right here. I'll just uh, move it on over by this answer here by this guy named Sebastian. So thank you very much, Sebastian, for this post. Very helpful. And so I'm gonna go through the steps. I'm, changed a couple of things, but uh, sure so let's make a new user, Bob. Add user, Bob. Did that do enter? All right, Bob's password is Bob. There we go. Let's change user to Bob. There we go, Bob has no files yet. Make a file. Oops. There we go. Let's uh, test the speed real quick. Oops. Let's see. There we go. All right. So 1.5 gigabytes per second. That's what I'm getting here. And then we show. So we've written a couple of files. Now. So let's leave as being the user Bob and go back to root. And so I'm going to use this command called truncate. You can, uh, uh, and it's going to create a seven gigabyte file and like an empty file. Now you can also use DD. You can do DD if dev zero and then whatever the name of the file, you know, you dot Bob and then count one and then BS equals um, you know, seven gigs or whatever you want to make it. So we'll do that. All 
right? So I just created that file in my home, in the home directory. Now we're going to run crypt setup. Now you need, you probably would need to install that apt install crypt setup or whatever distro you're using. Uh, yes, in capital letters. And so this password has to match Bob, the password of the user Bob. Did I just type it in? And Bob's password is Bob. It's very secure. Um, all right, so we did that. Uh, Luke's format, Luke's open. Let's run that one. I really don't like the highlighting there. Um, Luke's open, so we type Bob, open that up. And now we'll see dev mapper Bob. I did auto, I did tab and it auto completed Bob. So, where are we? So, let's say it looks open. And now we're going to do this one here. And we're going to make an ext4 um, file system on it. There we go. That looks good. And let's let's go ahead and mount this Lux volume. I might call it Luke's. So we'll make a directory in the mount directory and call it Bob. And now let's go ahead and mount it. And so we use dev mapper Bob and um, mount that to mount Bob. There we go. And now we're going to do sh opt dash dash s dot glob. So what does this do? You can use an asterisk and it'll take care of your dot files as well. So it'll it'll move everything over. All right, so now if I do ls, I'm pretty sure ls is gonna show everything. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Bob's home directory and every file in it, including the dot files, and we're gonna move that to the, uh, l the Lux volume. And I got a five gigabyte file, so that's why that took a little while. Now let's unmount Bob. Let's unmount that. Now let's see. That's totally empty, the home Bob directory. And we can even arm deer that. Uh, that is a command that just deletes a directory only if it's empty. It's very useful to keep from deleting stuff. All right, so we unmounted Bob. And uh, we need to close that. Maybe I shouldn't have done the prior command there. There we go. All right, so we're all set up uh, with the Lux volume and everything. And so what we're gonna use, is, we're gonna edit this file right here. Uh, so PAM is the security stuff when you log in. That doesn't sound like a very technical explanation, does it? So you can do man PAM mount.conf that right here and you can look through the options there if you want and let's go ahead and open up this file
and we'll go to this volume definitions section. Copy that. Whoa, wrong thing. And so um, here, this is different than, th this wasn't included on the forum post that I showed you at the beginning. I needed to add user Bob, you know, the username, uh, because otherwise, uh, when I would S you as a different user, Pam would attempt to un unmount the Lux, the Lux volume uh, and uh, it would throw an error. So if you add user, the specific user, you won't have issues when you change to different users. So, so we have path. This is the path of the file I created using the truncate command. That's the one that you can also use the DD to create. And then I'm giving the mount point. Remember, home Bob is now an empty directory. All right, so we, that's very easy. And you have to put that under volume definitions. And so on my laptop, I have a separate volume, a separate partition. And that'll look something like this. You know, this is my Lux volume on my laptop. So it looks something like that. All right, so now it's time to change user and to log in as Bob. So we do SU Bob and we're prompted for the password, which is Bob. And now I'm logged in as Bob. And you can see the file we created earlier. I went ahead and deleted that ISO that I created with DD to test before. And so we'll do the same thing here. And let's see. I, uh, Bob does not have pseudo permissions, super user permissions. So I've got a root shell over here. I'll go over to Bob, the Bob home directory. Now, um, the root user can access Bob's home directory in this case, because it is unlocked because Bob is logged in. And so here it is. So I'm in his home directory, which is encrypted with, with Lux. And we're gonna run this file and see what our speed is. So 1.1 gigabytes per second. So <clears throat> it's not too bad of a performance penalty um, from whatever it was before. I can't remember if it was 1.4, 1.5 gigabytes per second in the uh, unencrypted section. So, uh, well, we can just go to a random directory and run it again and, and compare. Ooh, I don't know why that got worse there. There you go, 1.5 gigabytes per second. So now we are going to, we tested it out. Now let's exit as user Bob. Now exiting just uh, ran this Luke's, Luke's Lux close and it unmounted it so it's now no longer mounted and so if we do bf dash h grep bob nothing's going to come up so it's no longer mounted or anything and we now realize bob didn't get much space he only got seven gigabytes so we need to give him a bigger home directory with 10 gigabytes so let's do that using the truncate command again there we go, size 10 gigabytes for this file. You know, remember this file that we created up here that you can use DD or truncate. So let's expand it. Now, we uh, the file system within that is still at seven gigabytes. So we have to expand it. So let's open up, let's do Lux open and open it up. So let's run this. Let's unlock it, basically. 
password Bob. There we go. And now we can run this last one. Resize to FS dev mapper Bob. That's where we mapped it to there. Hit enter. And we're going to need to run this first. But after we run this first, it will work. All right, looks good. So let's resize to FS now. Oh, okay. Good. We're, we're set then. All right. So now let's go back in as Bob and we're going to mount it. SU Bob. There it is. And let's go to his home directory and let's do DF dash H grab Bob. And you can see here he has 10 gigabytes. 10 gigabytes available. So it says 9.8, but we set it to 10. So that's how you can make the space bigger for the user. One detail that was not included just now is that after resizing, you need to close, you need to run this, and then you'll be able to log in again. You'll be able to do SU Bob. So that was left out. And I hope this process goes well for you and that it will be fun and be beneficial.